Hello everyone, welcome to First Orbit, an indie spaceflight sim developed by Zach Turnage, available on itch.io. The key was provided to me by the developer. It is $10 on itch.io, and by its own description, it is a spaceflight sim made to help teach astronomics in an interactive and visual way. Take control of your rocket and explore the world of spaceflight, no math required. Fly trajectories used by actual NASA missions and explore aerospace concepts such as Hohmann transfers, Lagrange points, and more. And the features are Explorer 2D, so this is 2D solar system with realistic in-body physics, though, allowing for real mission trajectories to be recreated. Now, this is important because uh, one of the reasons I don't do Principia a lot in KSP, and Principia introduces in-body physics in KSP, is that it's very difficult for me to visualize what's going to happen. Uh, it seems sort of random to me sometimes. And so maybe reducing it to two dimensions will give me a better sense of how to uh, plan for things in n-body physics, or maybe not, who knows. But you know, the difference between what Kerbal Space Program normally uses, which is patch conics, and n-body physics is sort of subtle in terms of the actual delta-v requirements, so that's a complicated thing, but Lagrange points only exist in n-body physics, they do not exist in patch conics, so if you want to do missions to Lagrange points, which are points that are stable between two gravitational bodies, then you have to use n-body physics. So we'll, uh, I don't know if we'll get to see whether we can do that or not. I don't know how complicated this is going to get. I've tried it once, and there are complications uh, with using this particular program, uh, but we will see. So anyway, that's one feature, and it's got uh, practice fly, practice and fly new trajectories, there's a challenge mode, and it's got a manual. And you will need to look at the manual. You will need to look at the manual because otherwise you won't know what keys to press. So I actually have the PDF open uh, so that I can see the keys. Uh, that's probably not ideal, so yeah. Uh, but I have two monitors. For those who don't have two monitors, it's... Uh, more complicated. Now we don't have the menu here right now, and escape will quit the game. So this is a fairly uh, simple sort of, uh, well, I say game, a fairly simple sort of app, we'll say. And I'm going to go with sandbox mode. So here we see the very distinctive art style of First Orbit, and there's one good thing about it, because if you want to demonstrate something for educational purposes, if you're making a video about a particular NASA mission, uh, this makes it very clear, and it's sort of reminiscent of the 1960s art style in documentaries and stuff like that. So that's pretty good too. But there's a lot to get used to. For instance, if you left click here, you'll stop tracking your spacecraft. You have to click on your spacecraft to track it, or you can click on Earth, and it sort of wobbles a little bit. But anyway, uh, so you have to click on your spacecraft to track it and not click on other things. There's the Sun, Mercury, Venus, Earth, Moon, and Mars, but not the outer planets yet. And so to adjust your reference frame, because that's important with n-body physics for sure, uh, you can click on those. And then there's a... I don't know what rote is. It, I, I didn't get to that part of the manual, apparently. So in order to throttle up, you press A. Throttle down is Z. And there are a lot of other keys to remember. And when you press E, you thrust. But if you... Let go of E, you stop thrusting, and that can happen. And then you automatically restart. It's fairly simple. So we'll throttle up again and try to get to orbit. F is to turn clockwise. S is to turn counterclockwise. Uh, you might want to pitch up. Uh, remember your pitch programs. Ah. Infinite ignitions. Ah, okay. No atmosphere, though. So that's good. So we'll just coast to apoapsis here. They don't give you the apoapsis or periapsis numbers, and every orbit is sort of polarish. And, you know, Eurasia doesn't exist. But, or uh, we have a glimmer of it there. But anyway. Okay, we're in orbit. It's fine. All right, so we'll try to get to the moon, shall we? Now, we can't pl plot maneuvers like that. But, you know, it's supposed to be simple and approachable and everything. So T increases the time warp rate. You can see the plot time, uh, the warp time up there. Plot time is different. I'll explain that in a sec. Uh, so in order to get to the moon, we want to hit the moon like over here-ish. So we'll start burning, well, right around here-ish will be good. So E, okay, so the plot time is to extend this line because otherwise it won't show. And then 
past a certain point, it stops updating unless you're not thrusting anymore, which is sort of irritating. Uh, we, we want it to update constantly, it would be ideal. Okay, well that's too far. But, we don't hold R, or no, let me just tap R. Are we getting bent by the moon there? Not really. Okay, so probably we need to go retrograde this way. And maybe throttle down a bit to fine tune things. So Z to throttle down. Okay, now we're clearly getting bent by the moon. You can see it's coming to a very definite turn there. We'll just go over to the moon and see what happens. So T to increase the warp time. I'm not going to attempt a landing this time. That's um, temporarily beyond my pay grade. Uh, so I'm going to focus on the moon here. Oh, we're way too far. So let's make sure to turn towards it. That's a real burn right there. And sort of puff it like that. Again, thanks. Thank goodness for re uh, infinite ignitions. Thank goodness for infinite ignitions. But we're going to proceed like this. Uh, too much warp. Okay. And uh, the fact that it doesn't update the orbit constantly is somewhat complicated. We require quite a lot of ignitions like this. But alright, we're in orbit around the moon and we need to return. Uh, we can't plot the return as such, but I sort of know when to do it. And so as a teaching aid, well, you'll have to have a teacher. <laughs> you'll have to have somebody explaining what to do. Because none of this is intuitive. Uh, you know, you're not going to be able to figure out how to get to the moon and back that easily just by looking at it or trying things out randomly. Probably, probably that's not going to be so easy, yeah. And as we break orbit here, uh, you can see that it's doing n-body things. Otherwise, the moon lunar orbit wouldn't be changing like this if it wasn't, wasn't for n-body physics. So, okay, uh, but we want Earth frame right now. Let's see what's happening. Okay, well, that's a nice return to the Earth. Okay. So, obviously, I, I've played this already. And on one of the previous tries, one of my mistakes was, once again, forgetting that the orbit doesn't update while we're applying thrust in this case. So I ended up crashing into the surface of the Earth. So this time I will not do that. I will properly puff the thrust as necessary. I don't know why Earth is sort of changing shape a little bit there. Okay, well, I want to be retrograde. Good thing it doesn't keep track of my fuel. This would be horrendous efficiency. Okay, well, maybe I should try to land? I don't know. I'll probably die, though. I mean, I don't even have a reference for how fast I'm going here. And there's no atmosphere to slow me down. Okay, uh... Uh, I wish I could reduce the plot time now. It's probably a way. Uh, no. No! Ah. Well, there you have it. So, I'll leave it there for now. I'm not going to do anything more ambitious. This was just an introductory video for First Orbit. I think it'd be interesting for people to use it in videos to explain certain things, maybe, because uh, otherwise using the KSP map is a little bit complicated. And n-body physics we need to play around with. That I haven't explored fully yet here. It does have the limitation that we only have certain bodies to work with. 
But I also sort of think that if somebody was doing a tutorial on basic orbital mechanics, they could explain a few things like this. Uh, it could be cute to actually uh, do Kerbal Space Program tutorials with this, uh, just to explain a few things, because again, KSP map is not always ideal for that. So anyway, with those thoughts, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.